and to remove the cassette just lift up on the lever just here and pull towards you before use remove the cap and add your toilet chemical with a small amount of water this is also where it empties from just remember that when you are pouring it away to hold the button in just here to release the vacuum inside it's also advisable to keep this seal lubricated Fetford do their own seal lubricant but any silicon based lubricant is fine and by turning this part just here allows access inside for additional cleaning all of these cassettes now are on wheels with extendable handles on these particular auto trail models if I lift this section up just here you'll see you can add a filter they do only last a short period of time and then have to be replaced you do not have to use these if you don't want to as you can pause the fan if you do not want to use it next we have the barbecue point so the barbecue adapter looks like this so attach the hose the barbecue to this rib section here and secure it with a jubilee clip and then it literally just plugs in like so and then you can then turn it to turn the gas on vents for the Fetford fridge freezer you are supplied with winter covers these can be used if you are using the motorhome home in extremely cold climate because they will help hold some heat in making the fridge run more efficiently to use these if we just demonstrate it on the lower vent just here you'll see clips here and here and then just remove the vent take the winter cover itself and then just pop it in like so and then if we then take the vent again and then just start at the bottom hook it in and then just do the clips back up again and then obviously we would then re do it for the top one as well always make sure that these have been removed in the warmer months or otherwise the fridge will just overheat and not work electric step just here this will put itself away automatically when the engine has been started it will also put itself away when the motorhome has been locked and it will put itself out again when the motorhome is unlocked it can also be controlled just inside the door just here just on the button here access underneath the bench seat just here and then we also have the gas locker to open the gas locker you do need to come to the passenger side door and you'll see a lever just here just lift this up and it will then open the hatch so as you can see there's room in this gas locker for two gas bottles the regulator just sits here and this particular regulator is fitted with a drive safe valve so this works in conjunction with this particular gas hose so it looks very similar to the one that's on my demonstrator bottle but you'll see that this one here has this black button just here so the hose comes off the regulator and screws into the propane bottle and is tightened with a gas spanner 
bottle on and off on the top here. So if it's this hose, once you've turned the bottle on, what you will then need to do is just hold this button in just here for about four or five seconds and this will then allow the gas into the van. What would happen if this particular hose got severed in any way, the valve just here recognises the sudden drop in gas pressure and then cuts the gas off at this point to stop it escaping from the bottle. If there was any damage inside the motorhome, the crash valve in this part of the regulator recognises the sudden drop in gas pressure and then will stop the gas leaking out inside. Sometimes these can be triggered if you go over a bump quite violently. So if you've got your gas bottle turned on and you've held this button in and you're still not getting any gas into the motorhome, just come and press and hold the reset button here for about three or four seconds and it will then reset this crash valve as well. The beauty of this system is that you do not need to turn your gas bottle off for travel if you wish. We then have the rollout canopy just here and to roll this out take the canopy winding handle and then pop it in to this point just here and then begin to wind the canopy out. And as you can now see I've wound the canopy out a short distance. I always prefer to do this and then drop the legs for support so you're not putting too much stress on the side of the motorhome itself or the canopy. So the legs just literally grab hold and as you can see it will then swing out here and then just drop it down, undo and then drop the leg to the ground, get the canopy at the height that you require and then just lock it into place and then if I do exactly the same again with the other leg and now we have the canopy supported and I can now continue to wind it out, walking the legs out as I go. As you can now see, the canopy is fully wound out. Never use in high winds, as you do run the risk of it being flipped over the top of the motorhome. When it comes to putting the canopy away, wind it back in roughly to the point where we drop the legs, pop the legs back in and then continue to wind until it will not wind any further. You will sometimes find that the canopy winding handle will get stuck in like it is at the moment. Literally just push it up and then twist it round and then it will drop back out again. The diesel cap is just located in here and is unlocked on the ignition key. Tire pressures on the door pillar just here. Jack and wheel brace kit is all located in its own box underneath the passenger seat. Vehicle battery is located underneath the floor just here and then bonnet release is just here.